Hey guys, the balloon here, and today is not another BTD6 video. As you can see behind you, there are no balloons, there are no green screens. Today is just going to be a me and a you, and I'm answering all those questions you guys have been asking in the Discord. In the last few videos, I've been dropping that Q&A channel inside the Discord, and you guys have been giving me some great, great, great questions. I've been reading them along the way, and they're cracking me up. But today, I picked just a few dozen to help out um, I was not able to get all of them because I think there's over 100, but I did get a good solid 20 or 30 in here for this video. And I'm really excited to answer them for you. I just figured after 10,000 subscribers, you guys should know a little bit more about the guy you've been watching. Some of you may not be into that or most of you may not be into that. But if that's the case, just wait till Wednesday or Friday to be back to balloons. But I figured you guys might want to see a little bit behind the scenes. And I hope you do because I had a lot of fun designing this idea or answering the questions in my head before I make the video. So it's just really fun. And this is all what this is about, right? YouTube, everything's just about having some fun. And that's what I'm gonna do here today. So thank you guys for this. And thank you guys for 10,000 to think that like back in July, it was 100 and now it's 10,000 is just madness. So thank you to every single subscriber. I do not take any of you for granted. Thank you to my staff. You guys know who you are, but KJ, Basho, Mastodon, Sooners, Rabio, Supreme, Ace, Siebs, and T-Fuel. I wrote you all down so I don't leave any of you out. You guys are so awesome and you guys have all helped in your own way make this what it is. So I could not be here without you guys. So thank you so, so, so much. And thank you to Ninja Kiwi for creating such an amazing game and an amazing community. And I would not be here without the game itself, right? And so thank you guys. Thank you, Sam and Rohan. You guys are awesome. I've always been so supportive. And guys, this is just such, such, such a cool thing. And I'm so excited to answer all these questions for you and just keep growing. And I just don't know where this is gonna take in the future, but I'm just excited to see where everything goes. So thank you guys so much. And let's jump into these questions. <laughs> Our first question is gonna be from none other than Bachelor Chalupa and he asks, what got you into balloons? Well, what got me into balloons was the original balloons game. I'm, ta I'm not talking tower defense, I'm talking balloons where the guy pulls the dart back, little monkey pulls the dart back and then it shoots in an arc motion, pops all the balloons. That game was super addicting and super fun. If you guys haven't checked it out, you should go to Ninja Kiwi's website. But that's what got me into balloons. And then I saw they had a tower defense and then more tower defenses and more tower defenses and then I was hooked. So it has been through the years and then I started playing BCD5 and that's where I just like got like, crazy about the game played every minute of it i had most of the medals on all of that game and then they kept releasing stuff and i couldn't catch up but for the most part i was hooked love that game love this series and then he asks of the second question is what mental disorder makes you think that the west coast is the best coast well maybe i'm just crazy but west coast is best coast it rhymes does east coast i mean they say east coast beast coast but what does that even mean west coast is the best coast we got sunshine tons of traffic we have a lot of heat like this weekend it was raining and then the next day was 80 degrees. Where else can you get that? That's crazy. So I love the West Coast and I wouldn't imagine growing up anywhere else, but I do plan to leave one day. But for now, West Coast is the best coast. Mitchell or Mitch01 asks, Hi YouTube, how long does it take for you to make strategies and what is your favorite map? My favorite map is Cubism. I love the straight lines in it. I It's just perfection to me that it's so, there's not one rounded spot in that and I love that. I don't know what it is, maybe it's an OCD thing, but I love that about that map. All right, and how long does it take me to make my strategies? Well, it depends on the maps. Back in the day before I blackboard all those beginners, I could just jump on that more that Monday night and do like a half cash in the loop video right there, which was pretty cool but now it takes some time because we're in those intermediate advanced and experts. So I would say probably a couple hours to several hours, if not like 10 hours on some of these maps. Uh, just recently I spent, um, Rake wasn't too bad, but I spent a few hours on Rake trying to do that Sun Avatar perma spike, and that's when I was like Druids. And then Druids took the 30 minutes for that first run and then I made a video. So about total like an hour and a half on the Druids. But before that was like so many hours, it's just so crazy. Uh, let me know below what, how long you guys take to make strategies and if you even do make strategies, how long does it take you as far as like do you use challenge editor, you just keep going at it, you keep dying on 98 like four times then give up for a week because I do that sometimes too. But just let me know below. Sooners84 asks, what is your favorite tower in BTD6? Definitely 100%. He's going to love this answer. Spirit of the Forest. I love him. He's super happy. I know it's been debated in the past that he's not the happiest, but because he hides behind that straight line smile. But he seems really happy and he's his Moose Jesus has all those flowers on him. Who couldn't love the Moose Jesus spirit of the forest, guys? I just wish he was stronger so like I could make a real cool strat with him. Like I plan to do a video on that in the future, just a spirit of the forest strat. But he's like, honestly, I love him, but he's not the best. All right, and then he asked, what's your favorite pizza topping? That should go in the personal, but he asked two questions in one time, so I put them together. Um, that is definitely 100% without a doubt pineapple, and everybody's gonna think I'm crazy, I know, but pineapple on pizza is just meant to be. 
it's great. And you put it with that Canadian bacon, someone would call it ham, but we call it a, uh, what do you call it? Um, there's a Maui Zowie, but the Hawaiian pizza, you call it Hawaiian pizza and it's bomb. You dip it in ranch and you just got the best thing ever created. I eat a lot of pizza, so I would know. Definitely the best. Boyle asks, what is your favorite strategy to use and why? Favorite without a doubt is definitely those Druids. Love the Druids, guys. I mean, my favorite cluster of towers is gonna be like the Mage, Ninja, Oban strat. Like I really like that one, but Druids are my favorite because they just decimate. I like towers that just go on there and destroy. Like if they ever make the Dartling, he's gonna do that, right? And I just want them to get on there and beat the game. I know some people like to stall or think of really clever out of the box things. I just like to seek and destroy. And that's my kind of thing. So that's why I love the Druid strategy. Golden Curry says, and if you could add a new monkey to BTD6, what would it do? Or who is it and what would it do? I would choose that little caveman in Frozen Over. I think he'd be really a cool tower because he's already there. It's They have the concept art for him. He could use his club to bash those balloons. He'd be kind of like a mixture of Pat and some kind of military to where he just attacks, but then he can call in his dino buddy and that guy runs through and just knocks all the balloons. I think that'd be kind of cool, right? Also, I would like a penguin monkey. I know penguins are not monkeys and that'd be kind of hard, but what if like a monkey dressed as a penguin and he just kind of like slipped around the screen and defeated all the balloons? That'd be kind of cool. Next question. Mastodon says, what is your first memory of seeing a balloon? That is a good question, but I can't remember. I'd have to say maybe like school, like when I was a kid at the carnivals, but I really don't know. What's your guys? Oh, okay. First one I can think of that I remember is like when you take the the balloon and you rub it on your head really fast and then you lift it up and it's all staticky and you have, you know, when you're a kid you have like a long bowl cut, at least I did, and I would go and then it would all stand up. That was kind of fun. Basho Chalupa again asks, do you have dreams about the balloons getting through? Crazy, but yes. Like that's really weird, I know, but like I play it really late. And so my goal is to play it late, get my strategy done and then make a video on it the next morning. Well, the downside of that is if you fall asleep playing balloons, you're dreaming of balloons. And so I will literally have those like awake dreams that you kind of get when you're sick, you know, where you like can't decide if you're asleep or awake. And I'm like beating the game, playing through it. I'm losing balloons, I'm beating towers. I'm just doing whatever in my dream and it drives me insane, but it comes with the territory. I guess there's not much I can do about it. All right, next question is gonna be from Robbie O. What advice do you have for new people trying out BTD6? That's a cool question because I know a lot of people have been playing this game lately and I've been getting comments and comments in the streams saying like, hey, I'm new to the game. Guess the best advice would be just to play the game, guys. Have fun with it. Don't necessarily jump right into watching like myself or other people and just to learn their strategies. Learn for yourself, see what you like, see what works, see what doesn't work. And then if you're stumped, jump in and try to ask for help. But in the meantime, just play, 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 fail, 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 and you'll learn. That's how you learn everything for the most part, I think. Question two from Rabio is how many times do you usually fail in making chimps? That's kind of like the question I was answering earlier. Since due to the recent fact of using challenge editor, I do not lose the game pretty much. I just lose that round and I get to restart that round, which is really awesome. Cause I kind of have my strategy in mind or what I feel like I want to use for that video. And then I just had to have to make it work on challenge editor. But then unfortunately when I go to make the video the next morning or the day of whatever it is, I fail greatly. Like I have gone through videos so many times and that's why sometimes you'll see me act really fast in it. Like, like I've just drank an entire pot of coffee because like I've done it so many times. I'm just trying to get back to where I was and I'm like, or I'm really slow because I'm tired and I've done it like 10 times. Like that's all my different emotions. Cause usually cause I lose so much and depending on what time of the day it is. Real weird, real weird, I know. Lava No Zeke asks, which one of your monkeys has the most XP? That would probably be my ninja. He has a roughly like 18 million XP, which isn't much. I know, and then my next is like the mage with 12 million. I thought I'd have more because I know like a few of you guys have tons and tons and tons of experience on your monkeys, but I don't, I don't know why. Hmm. Okay, so the next few questions are kind of all in the same category. Blitz asks, do you think keeping your channel only balloons or are you gonna try to diversify your content like playing other games? 3055172981002076, that's for real his name. Asks, will you play any other games? That's not BTD6. And then Nonium says, if one day you made videos on every single map on the harsh difficulties and no one, no maps were left, what content would you make? Um, basically, all those questions kind of rolled together. So as you guys know, I made the Minecraft the Lunatic server, which I hope you guys are all in having a great time on. But I also tried streaming Call of Duty and I tried streaming Pokemon. I would like to diversify in the future, not just because I'd run out of Bloons content. I feel like there will always be something to do, right? Like I can revamp the Monkey Meadows 
videos because those are kind of getting old. Tree stumps a little outdated. I can redo all that stuff and just keep cycling through over the time. So it's like unlimited content with balloons, really. But I would like to diversify because I do like other games. I'm an actual gamer. I don't play them all on here. Obviously, like I play a lot on my main TV, so I can't stream over there on my Xbox and stuff like that. And so that's that's me, you know, I love games. I'm sure everybody that's watching this loves games. And so in the future, I'd like to, to kind of diversify, play other games that I like to play, but I haven't had much success when I jump on a stream with them. So who knows, in the future, maybe uh, Minecraft, I might actually do some YouTube videos like a Let's Play, which leads into Sieb's question. What are your thoughts on doing a Minecraft Let's Play series? That could be really cool just to chill out and watch you just play through and learn the game. I think it'd be fun to do that. I don't know if you guys would be excited to watch that because I'm very bad at the game, um, but I think it'd be really, really fun to start from the beginning, get to the end, and then like a progression video to see like if I actually learned anything all the way through, which would be kind of fun. So definitely I'm thinking about that in the future and I am gonna have a lot more time come March 1st because I am going to be working more from home in my day job. So that's gonna be awesome. A lot more content to come. Hopefully I can step up the game. You guys can definitely tell that the it's not a webcam anymore. I finally got my camera hooked up how I wanted it to and I'm happy with the quality and I'm really excited for these new angle, these new videos, the new background instead of like the green screen and just so much to come and I'm so excited about all of it. All right guys, now we're into the personal questions. So I thought I'd get up a little more close and personal for this because now, like I said, it's not a webcam. I can move this thing around and I'm excited about it. I'm gonna look back and be like, what were you doing with these angles and this weird stuff? But for now, I'm having some fun with this. So let's jump in these personal questions. The first one is going to be, how did you end up with the name Doubloon? So I was playing battles, terrible at it, jumped onto YouTube, tried to learn better. Super John Bombo was the guy that was there. So I watched a lot of his videos on battles and that's how I learned the game. And I like pretty much did tit for tat what he did on his strategies and that helped me get pretty decent at the game. And then I was like, you know what? This guy's inspired me. I wanna make a video. So on my lunch breaks in my car, I'd put on my screenshot thingy and I would play the game and talk to it with my iPhone headphones. And my name came from it because I was playing balloons and my favorite monkey at the time was the buccaneer pirate monkey. And he, you know, pirates love coins or doubloons. So not spelt the same, so I was like, Dubloon. And I tried to do D-A-B-L-O-O-N, and then I YouTube that, and some girl had like one video on it, and so that was taken. And so then I'm Dubloon with three O's. So that's how that name came to be. It's pretty much just a play on words with the game I play and the coins and money, right? Everyone loves money. So hopefully that answers that question. Next question is, what do you do for a living? I am a real estate broker and I'm, a lot of you in the US know what that is most likely, but basically I just buy and sell houses or I help clients buy and sell houses. But then during the week, I work with a property management company and we collect rents, deal with evictions, things like that. And that's where I'm gonna be leaving soon to come home just to buy and sell the homes from my home office that I have here. So I'm gonna have a lot more time for this, it's really cool. So it's a self-employment job, it's very, um, kind of have to have, be self-motivated kind of thing, but it's fun and it's exciting and it allows me to do this in my free time. Next question is from Neptune. Oh, did I say the last people's names? It was Red Jam who asked that one about my name and then JH01 asked about what I do for a living. And now Ned, Nin, Nin P -tune, Nep, Nimp Tune, how long have you and your wife been married? We've been married for 2018 almost two years in June, which is pretty awesome. We were actually dating, I think four or five years before that. And we kind of were even friends before that. So we've got to know each other very, very well. And then we were just like, well, duh, we gotta get married. And now we've been married for almost two years and she is like my best friend. And we do everything together and we spend every minute together. So it's been hard doing all these videos right after work because I've been cutting a lot of my time with her down to pretty much nothing. But like I said, guys, working from home soon, so that's all gonna change. And I'm really happy about it all. Devious. How did you meet your wife? Well, I met her at the school district. Me and her both worked for the school. We were paraeducators. We never started dating till like probably a year after that. We were still in the same class together. And then we started dating after that. And then we both went our separate ways to different schools. And then I just kind of did real estate full time. And she's actually now a kindergarten teacher. So she kept with the school district and I kind of moved on to my own thing, but that is how we met. Ein Sheriff one says, what did your wife think about you doing your day job and YouTube at the same time, not leaving much time to pay attention to her and hang out with her? That is a great question. And that was actually really tough for me. As I was trying to say earlier, was that like I would come home and I would play BTD battles. And this was back when we were like pretty broke. We didn't really have much money. And cause I was still working for the school as well. And that didn't pay as much as we needed it to. And so I was working for the school 
and I would come home and I'd make these videos. And at the time I had like five, maybe 10 subscribers and no views on any of my videos. And so I'd come home and I wouldn't help with, you know, dishes or laundry or chores. And I was like, I gotta make my videos. And she didn't understand it. I didn't even understand it back then. And so that was a little tough. But then as it kind of moved on and I kind of realized like, hey, I took it like a year or two break, got my other job going. And then I was able to actually use my free time while actually making money on the side. So it was cool with my other job. And then we, she got more accustomed to it. And then after, like I said, after I stopped for like a year or two, I came back and my one video for how to beat Impossible in BTD5 like blew up, had over a thousand views. That's not blowing up, but it was to me for someone who had nothing. And I had like 75 subscribers. I'm like, what happened? I haven't even been on here. So. YouTube algorithm worked while I was away. That just led to another and I was like, I'm gonna start making videos again. And that's kind of how we're here. So it's pretty cool. Doc Remy 01 says, where would you and your wife like to go? We have gone to Hawaii twice because we love Hawaii, but we want to go a lot of other places. So we of course want to do like the, everyone wants to do, you know, like Ireland, Italy. I want to go to Japan really bad. I just, I think it'd be super cool. Norway, because we're both ancestral from Norway, we're not, Neither of us are like Norwegian or American, but we supposedly have roots from Norway and our, both of our blow should be kind of cool to go there and see that. Just pretty much anywhere, honestly. We could travel anywhere, but we have fur babies and our dogs do not allow us to do anything without like having sitters and all this stuff. Next question is from Mistress Evil. Do you and the wife have any kids? We do not have any kids at this moment. We've just been trying to like plan it perfectly and I'm getting older, which is kind of weird. So I don't know. I want to have kids really bad. So does she, but we've just been trying to get everything like our ducks in a row, make sure everything's where we want it to be. And I kind of wanted to take a step back from, you know, being at work all day because I want to be there when I have my kids. So no, we do not have kids yet. We will in the future, hopefully real soon here. Cause I'm just climbing that age ladder and I want to have them before. I'm like too old to have kids, I guess. Next question is favorite hobby and why? My favorite hobby would be this. Honestly, like I'm not making a living off of YouTube. It is still considered a hobby and I love it. I love every minute of it. I love the thumbnails. I love creating new content. I love coming up with a, like I made my intro and all the things you see I've made myself and I love all of that stuff. Cause I come from, you know, real estate background. So I've always edited my own photos. Um, done all my listing things. I've done marketing, uh, new ads, uh, new flyers, created a bunch of different things for that for marketing campaigns. And so I've transferred that all over to here and I just love that part of it. It's what my degree's in. Marketing is just awesome. YouTube is awesome. Editing is awesome. I love it all guys. And of course I love all the feedback. Like I love doing it. And not only is it like, I find it fun and cool, but you guys do too, which is really, really, really awesome. So that's my favorite hobby. Crazy the Blunatic fan says, goals in life, personal, job, gaming, etc. Well, my goals in life are pretty much the same as anyone's, I feel like. It's to get, be happy, honestly. And that's why I kind of took a step back from my other job is because I want to be happy, guys. And I wasn't happy. I was dealing with a lot of bad people, bad situations, things like that. And I just want to be happy. I want to come home and be happy to see my wife and not be stressed about other things of life. And I want to just be able to not be at work all the time. So I guess my goals would be to be um, win the lotto, of course, like everybody's. But at the same time, no, our goals in life together are we would really love to like the investor I work with for real estate, we help them flip homes. So like I've been in the houses, learning the stuff, doing that on the side as well. So it's been crazy, been crazy. But so eventually we want to flip our own house, like the Chip and Joanna Gaines kind of thing. And we know have enough knowledge to do it. We know the real estate market well enough. We just have to save up that nest egg to be able to buy our first one. And that's kind of our goals in the future. And as far as this channel goes, I'm going to keep rolling it out. Hopefully over time, it just grows into whatever it grows into. If it stays blooms, awesome. If it evolves into something else, awesome. And I'm cool with whatever guys. And it's just been a great fun experience. And I'm sorry I've been sliding back in my chair back more. It's just really addicting. And it's probably throwing you guys off. And I'm now looking at the screen, checking it out, but it's like super fun. I don't know why. What's your favorite TV show? Anything on Netflix, guys. We've been as obsessed with weird stuff. We just got through Love is Blind. We got through The Circle. Not the movie with the girl from Harry Potter, but the reality TV show, which is ridiculous, but awesome. Um, I love, but my favorite ones that I like have to watch whenever they're on is The Flash, of course. 
Um, I used to be obsessed with Arrow, but that one, oh, that jumped the shark. But Flash is amazing. I loved Prison Break back in the day. Sopranos, just anything good. I love it. I just love all that stuff, which leads into my next question from Anno. It says, what's your favorite film? Comedy is definitely Step Brothers. And then my favorite movie is like, oh, I have a huge list, but just shorthand off the top of my head would be like, um, Catch Me If You Can with Tom Hanks and Leonardo DiCaprio. That is just an amazingly beautiful movie and I love it so, so, so much. And I love the Fast and Furious franchise too. Don't forget about those ones. All right, what is my favorite game that I've ever played? Um, my favorite game I've ever played is definitely Super Smash Brothers, guys. I love Super Smash. I've been addicted to it since the beginning, back when the Nintendo 64 version, when there was bugs in that game and we would all gather around me and my friends, we'd gather around at a house for a party and we'd all just beat each other up on Smash Brothers and it was the best thing ever and I wish I could do that for the rest of my life. Go back to those times, but you can't, right? Spamuel, you had a question. I think you know what that question is, but I'm not gonna ask ask it because it's too hilarious, but just had to give you props because it actually was the only one that like made me like, ah, when I wanted to go do it. So congrats to you, man. Paraline says, if you could teleport, what place in the world would you frequently be at? The first thing I thought of, it's probably because I used to love that movie Jumper with Hayden Christensen but the bank. I was like, the bank, right? No one would ever find me, the bank. I would go and take a bunch of money. But that's probably the terrible thing to say. Um, I'd probably go somewhere just cool. I would just go everywhere, but probably frequently places that I would go a lot would be somewhere where I'd be secluded by myself with nothing. Like I would just go, me and my wife, I'd teleport us to like the middle of nowhere in like a little log cabin and we'd get away there for a few weeks or hours, whatever it may be. And then we would come back. So that would be kind of cool. And teleporting would be my definitely number one superpower if I could choose, 100%. Second would be flying. Now that that was the question, but it feels like it could have been. What is taboo burger ingredient for you? Like what should you never put on a burger? Uh, that's nothing actually. I am the least pickiest eater you will ever find in your life. I will eat anything. I have zero regards. I don't care if, if you put it in my face, I will eat it. I will not physically make it myself and eat it, but if you put it in front of me, I will devour it like nothing else. I don't care what it is. I don't know why I'm like that. I just a garbage disposal and I figure food is food and you're gonna forget about what you ate like three minutes after you eat anyway, right? So who cares? Just eat it. Unless you're like allergic, eat everything. Who cares? Fergan says, what is your favorite Starbucks drink? I love that question because he knows that I'm addicted to Starbucks and I don't know why it's overpriced. It's not the best, but it's just like an, an addiction. I love coffee, but um, the white mocha is amazing. And if you haven't been to Starbucks and you're one of those people like, I'm never gonna go there, it's too much, blah, blah, blah. But you find yourself there one day, definitely check out the white mocha. It's like white chocolate, and coffee, but get the hot one. And it's um, it's really good. It's just taste bomb and it's coffee. So what you can't go wrong with it. Sabir says, Mr. Joel Z the balloon, I have another question. What is your favorite place to eat not fast food? That would definitely be TGI Fridays because me and my wife are like bargain hunters with that stuff. And we go on half appetizer day. So it's like every night between seven, 10 or something, we go and get half appetizers. So we get the chicken jack strips with the jack sauce and we get the fries for $1.50 and we get the nachos grande, but they're all half price. So we get out of there after tip for like $15. Can you believe that at a, at a restaurant? So awesome. We're weird like that, but we find fun in like making things cheap and e economistic. Is that even a word? I don't know. And then he says, what is your favorite fast food area? Del Taco, hands down, Del Taco. Love it, everything there, great. Sooner says, who's the next YouTuber you'd want to do a collab with and why? Honestly, guys, serious question here. My my favorite collab would be, I'm always the guy that's like the hype train. And when I do something new or fun, I always try to get all my like friends, like this has been back since I was a kid. Like if I got a new video game, I'm trying to get everyone to play it. If I got a new skateboard, I want everyone to skateboard. And I'm like, just always want to be the hype guy. So everyone will do it. So honestly, my favorite collab would be any one of my staff members. They've been with me since this for, most of you have been this since the beginning. So. And I've, I guess you could call it a collab. I've done videos with KJ and Mastodon, things like that. But I would love for them to make a channel. And I know they all have their own lives and their own thing, but if they made a channel, I would love to collab with them just because they've helped me make it this far. I wanna do what I can to help them and just to hang out with them on the YouTube scale so we can like talk about YouTubing together. And so like Seeb says he's gonna make a channel. I think it'd be awesome because like, I just love talking about this stuff. And my wife gets tired of hearing about it every day when I'm like, guess what I did? Guess what I did? So it'd be cool to have like someone else to like, bond with that i guess you'd say next question is from hot we fit trainer that's a funny name what's something you would want to say to someone trying to start a youtube channel 
So I believe these are my last questions here and are what are some tips you have for new content creators? That's from Lana Boy. So I guess it kind of goes with my last question because I would want anybody to obviously live out their dreams, do what they want to do. And if they've been inspired by me or anybody else, then to definitely pursue that and go on YouTube. Um, I don't care what anybody tells you. Like in real estate, you hear every day, oh, the market's going to crash. This is the worst time to jump in, blah, blah, blah. It always does. That. Everybody says that everyone's doomsday. So there's no wrong time to start YouTube. Start it today if you have to. And I would just recommend and just going all out guys don't worry about like having the best quality look at my first videos they're trash um don't worry about like the thing you gotta worry about is like what are you doing like what's your plan like are you just gonna make a video are you like gonna do a tutorial are you gonna do something crazy and then just do what you like and then learn guys as, as with any job or anything that you want to do any hobby you got to learn it right you can't just jump in and expect a fast road so definitely jump in and just start watching so like how to grow your YouTube channel, how to get 100 subscribers, how to make a thumbnail, how to do this, how to do that. I'm on YouTube constantly, still to this day. I try to learn more of the algorithm, learn more what's working, learn the trends of YouTube so I can keep on growing because I don't want to be left in the dust one day. So just learn, 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 and make your videos and make them happy and fun and all that kind of stuff. And then maybe we can collab together one day, guys. Maybe we can, it'll be cool stuff. So that is it for these questions. My mouth is drier than the Sahara Desert and I hope this all this footage came out okay. This is like I said, my first time using this camera for this YouTube vlog type, type style thing. Um, I did make it work on the stream today, which is awesome, but I would love, love, love to do this more in the future. So if you're, the questions you wanted to hear didn't get answered or you have more questions, definitely let me know. I would love to keep doing this. And I've always like, since I first started watching YouTube back in like 07, I've wanted to be a vlogger like forever. I just never had, an idea or what to do. But if you guys are into this kind of stuff, let me know below because it'd be really cool to keep on going with this stuff. And then also guys, stay tuned for more Bloons videos, more streams, more everything like that. I will have more time at home, so I'm really, really excited. But here's to another thousand subs or however many this channel can grow to. Now I'm just kind of hooked on it. Like I say it all the time, how grateful I am and how excited I am, but now I'm just hooked and I want to see what we can do. What, where's our ceiling guys? Where's our limit? I like, want to shoot through it. I love this. It's addicting. It's fun. And I would recommend it to anyone who has the time or just has the passion for videos and editing and making people happy. And that's kind of my thing. So with all of that said, guys, I am super happy to be here and super grateful for where we've come. And thank you guys so much for watching this. And if you guys liked it all, and if you sat through the whole thing, my word of the day is Dr. Pepper because there's one in front of me, made me think of it. So if you guys made it this far, let me know below. And then, like I said, if you have any more questions you want to ask, definitely ask them in the stream. You can ask me on Discord or wherever else, wherever else you guys may like. But thank you guys. And in the meantime, join the Twitch, join everything else. You guys know the drill. But I will see you guys next time.